so the the beginnings. I don't know how far back uh, we should go, but uh, uh, I think we both had just interest in this uh, policy space uh, for quite some time, just uh, uh, as a general topic or something of interest. And uh, just one of the observations I kept making over time was that wow, as I read about um, what makes for good policy principles, these are very similar to what makes good supply chain thinking. Uh, and just there's a tremendous amount of overlap between um, some of the things that, uh, yeah, we as supply chain professionals uh, leverage for making good decisions and um, coming to a good uh, practice. Uh, same things apply uh, toward making good policy. So uh, just that overlap jumped out at me. And uh, so when, when Brian uh, asked about uh, uh, would I have some interest in, in putting together a paper uh, talking about uh, the interface between supply chain and policy, uh, I thought, yeah, what a neat opportunity to uh, try to capture some of those ideas, maybe even organize my own thoughts a little bit and uh, uh, share some things with uh, the supply chain community. So. Yeah, I just add, uh, Bass and I are both uh, maybe closet economists. I don't know. We're very <laughs> interested in economics and uh, had a lot of lunchtime conversations uh, kind of looking at things more from an economics point of view and a policy uh, perspective. Lots of interesting discussions there. So this has been a great uh, opportunity to collaborate in a little more formalized way. So we, we again, appreciate the opportunity to, uh, to contribute in this way. So... Uh, in terms of uh, the direction that we took with the paper, um, we uh, tried to identify some of those uh, key elements of uh, good policy making. What are some uh, of the, the great economic thinkers of uh, you know the past couple of centuries all the way to today? Uh, what are some elements that they've identified as critical for good policy? And so we tried to uh, identify a handful of those and uh, show some linkages between those and supply chain thinking. Um, you know, so things like uh, understanding of interdependencies um, and uh, unintended consequences, uh, the way people actually behave versus the way that uh, they're, they're supposed to behave, uh, things along those lines, and uh, highlighted how those play out in supply chain and policy. Um, and so, I think that was uh, one of the, the, the main focuses. We also spent some time examining um, what are some ways in which uh, supply chain speaks to current policy. And, uh, you know, I've been struck over the years by how much of uh, policy debate really plays out in supply chain, uh, the supply chain domain, certain functions, certain activities, or uh, even things like global trade, which is huge today. Um, supply chain is at the core of all these things. So we spent some time kind of focusing on uh, you know, what are some of the big things uh, going on in the world today, policy-wise, and, and how is supply chain wrapped up in that? Yeah, I think one of the key messages, uh, maybe the key message of the paper, is, is just um, making the case for why supply chain researchers are uh, appropriate contributors to this debate, uh, policy debates, what right? we can bring to the to the conversation uh, based on our per perspective, our particular perspective, the kinds of units of analysis that we typically look at that are really kind of uh, mid-range, you know, not the, the industry sector or econ economy level that most economists or policy people look at uh, and not really at the individual decision maker, although that is some of our research as well. But but really bringing that perspective uh, from businesses, business units and business networks, uh, that's useful. While at the same time, you know, drawing on many of the same uh, theoretical grounds that some of our economist friends uh, draw upon. And it's, it's really interesting to think about how some of the theories that we use a lot in supply chain research, transaction cost economics or social network theory or whatever, can be applied to these policy discussions. And I think that's where we can contribute a lot based on that unique perspective and, and some familiar theories, but applied in a different way. I think in terms of future, uh, one of the things that we 
try to address in the paper is opportunities for supply chain researchers to uh, continue this and to uh, um, apply our uh, unique insights to this space. And so uh, we, we try to lay out a few um, opportunities or areas, but you know it's important uh, to, to highlight the fact that you know, we're, we're not suggesting that supply chain researchers drop everything that they're doing and all of a sudden become <clears throat> policy uh, focused in their work. Um, simply to consider uh, what are the policy implications of what we're currently doing and, and how can we speak to um, the broader uh, audience of uh, economists and policymakers, lawmakers, uh, uh, you name it, uh, given the insights that we're generating already. And so uh, we, we discuss a few projects that are uh, we've seen already along those lines and uh, try to highlight a few more. Um, so. Yeah, uh, kind of speaking personally, I'd love to see a community of researchers grow uh, around this topic. I know there's folks out there who have done research already, and we actually try to reference some of those works. Um, but just like we've built communities around other perspectives or, or domains within the larger supply chain research area, I think it would be fun to, to get a group of folks who have similar interests and, and develop research in those ways. <clears throat> Again, I don't we're not really calling for a, uh, a new set of research skills or, or even a focus so much, just, just a little bit more of an emphasis on the implications for policymakers that might come from the research that's already going on. 